up everybody? Welcome to T-Sport Line. We've got Cybertruck, one of the original first 10 from the delivery event here. And we've been doing a lot of work on it, but I want to take a minute to stop and just go through some inspections on this. There's been a lot of content out there where people are talking about most of the upside of the truck, but since we have the truck and we've taken a lot of it apart to do scanning and engineering measuring, great chance for us to put it up on the lift and show off some of the inner workings of the Cybertruck. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick it up here. We've already got it on the lift and come on in for a second. Uh, we're gonna show you, so one thing right off the bat that's unique with the Cybertruck is it doesn't have any jack puck locations. It, it has a, a function built right in, it's like a nice pad. So you can put it on a lift with no jack puck adapters. You can jack it up with a, with a floor jack pretty easily, but we'll show you that. So let's get started. Head on up. take a look here we've got the we've got the um, wheel arches off and we're doing some measuring up here but I want to point out you've got a Bluetooth sensor up here or a Bluetooth receiver so this is going to be communicating with the TPMS this is going to potentially communicate with the proximity around the Tesla so we found those there's one in each of the four corners uh, this is just an example of where it's at Let's look at the charge door while we've got this down too. So pretty much the same over here. We open this up, this pops open, um, but everything looks like what you'd expect. One thing is notice when this thing is up and the suspension is down, you've got quite a bit of room. And a common question people are having online is how much bigger tire can I put on this? Well, come up here to the front. It's a little dark in here, but if you take a look, you can bring the camera in and you can see that on the on this um, on the upright here in the upper control arm, this nut that goes through is actually over the tire. So as far as how big of a tire can you put on the Cybertruck with a stock wheel without changing the offset or moving things around, it's going to be minimally bigger than what's on there. So we have an aftermarket Wild Peak, this is a brand new Falcon Wild Peak tire on here, but it's the same size as the factory Goodyear. So you have, you have less than an inch that's gonna fit with a stock tire or our stock fitment wheels. What would it take to put bigger tires on? Well, you're gonna, you're gonna have to move the wheel out. Okay, you gotta get away from this geometry right here. To do that, it's gonna compromise the wheel arches, so there's gonna to have to be some consideration for how low mode you wanna go into if you put big tires on. The second area of limitation is up in here. So when we're turning the wheel lock to lock, there's not a lot of room in here. So if you put a bigger tire on again, you'd run out of space there. Uh, as we work our way around the truck, let's take a look at this. We've got the front bumper cover off and the front bumper cover, it's just plastic. So it's really, it's, it's just for looks. This is the plastic cover pulled off. There's not, I mean, you have a crash bumper, but you don't have like a steel bumper. You're not gonna be pushing anything around up here. We do have the radar element up here. We've got a functional air dam that opens up. Um, looking back in this section, you've got tow hooks. It looks like there's a, there's a, threaded, uh, a threaded feature here on the frame rail. That may have been part of the manufacturing process, but this is what we expected when we took this off. Um, a couple connectors that go to the factory bumper cover. Let's take a look in the back before we go up. So we've already put the rear bumper cover back on, but before we put this on, it's really the same as the front. It's just a cover. So we're looking, uh, we'll, we'll make some, some step pads up here and obviously part of our aftermarket bumper plan. Let's go up. Oh, 
Okay, come on in. We'll, we'll go through wheels with another video, but you're gonna notice these are the T Sportline aftermarket wheels. We've got a couple different styles on the truck that we're, we're testing and doing some photos on, but this is our TCT wheel, and this is our aero cover. So this wheel, it's a flow formed wheel, and it does come with an aero cover. The point of differentiation for us is our aero cover bolts on, so it clamps onto the wheel, and then we have secondary bolts and it also sits flush, but we'll get into that with another video. Let's get the lights under here. If you can grab the extension cord, we'll come on underneath the truck. So what did we have here? We had a speaker here? Yeah, it's the reverse speaker. Okay, reverse speaker back here. No surprise. We'll get some light under here. All right, let's put the light under here. And let's just take a walk underneath this, get a full bird's eye view, first of all. So you've got the plastic cover back here. There's not a lot underneath this. It's just an aero cover. And then we have a, we call this a thin aluminum hydroform sheet right over the rear, uh, the rear chassis section. You've got a smaller panel, similar, right in front of that and then you move into the battery tray right up in here uh, we'll have to take some measurements on how thick the battery tray metal is one thing you're going to notice is there's an interesting t-slot type channel that goes down the down the middle now things to compare to versus let's say the rivian which we've been working on for a long time as well there's not a an underbody shield here so look for us to to come up with an with a aluminum honeycomb or some structure underneath this for an under underbody um, structure like a, a rock slider type feature now when we move out to the sides what's nice is well first of all there's no jack puck needed you've got a feature built right into the frame rail here for lifting on and it looks like this could be a, a uh, a spot for a jack stand. That's what, what, what we're gonna think that is. And moving down the edge out here, there are bolt holes, multiple bolt bosses that are exposed. The nice thing is they're easy to get to, even with the side cladding on. So again, the only thing I can compare to is Rivian. You've got a plastic aero panel on the bottom that you've got to pull off to get to this stuff. So it's nice that that's generally exposed Clearly these are for accessories like running boards and rock sliders. So pretty straightforward there. So we move up to the front, move past the battery tray. Here's a good chance to get an idea of the thickness. And we can measure this and put these specs on our website. But again, hydroformed aluminum skid plate up here. It's it's generally it's relatively thin. It's gonna be, you know, it'll be good for brush, but it's not gonna be stopping rocks or anything like that. And then Coming up into the front suspension, uh, pretty straightforward up here. I mean, they've got these nice aero, aero panels on this. So you've got a lower control arm, just like you would on in any other vehicle. But then this plastic aero panel looks clearly like an aero piece that they've designed and put on there. Come along up to the front. See our fans have kicked on. Uh, you can see a pretty beefy sway bar. Not sure, on, we'll have to check the diameter on this to get our lighting set up. Here, try this one. Okay, a little better there. So we can see sway bar, actually made in Germany. Most, most of the elements on this truck are made in the U.S. We've seen a lot of mentions all over the truck things made in the u.s so there's a good bit of this that's made made by tesla or made in the u.s um certain things not but that's a pretty good look underneath this next let's go ahead and pull this down and take a wheel off and we can take a look at the suspension a little bit up close so we're going to pull the lights out we'll lift this down a little bit
One thing you'll notice, you've got 100 pound wheel and tire assemblies pretty much or thereabouts. So we're gonna go down almost to the ground, make it easy for us to get to. Do we have the impact, Andy? Grab that. front wheel off. Now, while we're at it, I'll go ahead and mention, like I said, this is the T Sportline TCT wheel. First thing, confirming that is a regular Tesla lug nut. So they're back in action on the Cybertruck. The only difference is that you've got six of them. Instead of five, you have six now on the Cybertruck. Pull this off. Okay, with the wheel out of the way, we're gonna pull this back up, get some light on it. in here and you can take a look really uh, what you'd expect you've got air suspension no surprise there pretty straightforward geometry with the upper and lower control arms in the upright uh, you can see the continental air system type sensor familiar links like you've got on the model s and the model x interesting because in the front the bracket for the suspension link is is pretty accessible not sure people will want to lower the truck, but it would be pretty easy to make some adjustments there and control that. Caliper wise, um, it's raw. It's a piece of aluminum. So you're really not gonna see that with an aero cover, factory aero cover. But if you put like the T-Sport line CTC wheels or our, our TCT wheels on, you'll expose the brakes. Uh, folks that like that, that's great. The nice thing I see is, wow, look at this pretty flat surface here so we can paint the caliper you could put graphics on there all kinds of cool things personalization is possible the brakes actually overall we'll have to get some measurements here they're not overly gigantic um, I mean this is a pretty healthy caliper here let's see I'm not sure how many pistons we have four pistons right hard hard to see from this angle but Looking up in here, big sway bar, quite a big diameter. Um, this is, yep, this is a hollow sway bar. So you can tell by the edge of this where it's pinched together. You're not gonna be able to see it, but it's, it's uh, where, where this end is formed. You can feel an edge, which indicates that this is hollow, which is fine, that's pretty typical. Pretty big stuff. Looking in here, uh, pretty straightforward. I mean, this is just your regular um, vacuum formed or plastic shielding for the wheel cavity. Pretty standard looking stuff here. Let's see. Steering wise, you know, we have the steering by wire. There's still a rack, the steering rack, if you see on this side. We're not going to be able to see much of the control or the servo in the middle there, but. You know, from a wheel and a chassis perspective, it, that's not where the magic is. The magic is in the, com the computer, the, the, the uh, inputs from the steering wheel, and then the servo that, that does the actual steering. We'll see some of that in the back too. Uh, pretty straightforward though. So let's go ahead and put it back down. We'll take a rear wheel off and take a look at the back.
heavy. You don't want to lift that real high. Come on in. So let's see what we've got in the back. Again, more air suspension. We know that. Um, steering, steering, which is unique. So you've got our, our, let's see, where is our tie rod back here? You are steering. Interesting. This is moving up to a fixed point on a rack. So it looks like it's a fixed point in the chassis back here, but that's actually the, this is the edge. I don't know if you can see my fingers, but that back there is just a cradle bracket coming out of a steering rack. So that is gonna let this rear wheel steer. Uh, we've got the parking brake. You can take a look down here. Very similar. Looks like Model S, Model X type stuff. Calipers are raw. They may, there may be a, looks like a zinc coating maybe, probably a zinc coating on this just for corrosion, kind of what you've got here on the, on the caliper. Um, markings, it's a, te it's Tesla. It's made by Mando. It's got Mando Tesla. Um, that's your rear brake caliper. So you can come in the backside, take a look at that. You can see our rear um, drive axle here, CV joints on both sides going up into the middle. We've got a rear sway bar. Now, by comparison, the front sway bar was massive. Just eyeballing this, this is quite small. I would guess that this is smaller diameter than you have on a Model 3. Um, a little bit surprising, but you know that's all based on the vehicle dynamics and what they expect. So that's, that's what Tesla needed to, to get this thing to work. Uh, looking in there, you can see part of the part of this rear subframe structure. You can see the high voltage wires going back to motors. Uh, it's interesting, just take a look and get familiar with what's back here. I'll let you get in there with the camera. This is a long control arm. Look at this. It goes from out here all the way back into the back. Now, as far as tire clearance goes, you have less of an issue back here because this is the, um, the upright is contained within the wheel. Remember in the front, the upright came around around the top of the tire. So that's a little bit unique back here. Pretty wide open, but you're still gonna have, you're still gonna have touch points. Remember this steers back here. So if you put bigger tires on or you're changing offset, you've got to take into consideration the movement of the rear wheel. So that's it guys. Hopefully this is a good intro for you. You learned something about the Cybertruck. We are going to continue to be digging into this. We've got a lot of new products coming for it. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and, and follow us because we'll have a lot more Cybertruck content coming for you real soon. Thanks.